Before we go on to any more math with gradient fields, let's look at some gradient fields. They're fun to look at, first of all. And let's see why we're interested in gradient fields. So below is the gradient field of a function f. What can we say about f? Let's remember what our main points were. The first one is the gradient or gradient vector field. We saw vectors, so that's good. Of a scalar function, so f has to be a real valued function, is del of f, as many components to this vector as there are variables. So we need a real valued function that has as many variables as there are vector components. So how many vector components are there here? Two. So what can we say about f? The first thing we can say is it comes from r2, always goes to r. This is the part that's always because it's a scalar valued function. And this two here comes from the fact that this is a two dimensional. These vectors are two dimensional. So that's the first thing we can say. The second point about gradient fields is that the vectors of the gradient always point in the direction of function growth. So these vectors all appear to be pointing away from this point here that has no vector, but it should. And since it has no vector, we can see the vector at that point must be the zero vector. And when is the gradient of something zero? That means that that point, which is x equal to two, y equal to minus one, so x, y is two minus one, is in fact a stationary point, a point where the gradient is zero. Now, all of the vectors are pointing out from that point. So that means that we have a minimum there. We saw that in the one dimensional case. So this is a point of minimum. F at this value should be the minimum value of all of F in this region here. What else do we know? The magnitude of the vectors of the gradient is the rate of growth. Now, this particular depiction of vector fields, these are all done with Mathematica, which is fantastic for this, has the default option that the greater the magnitude, the bigger the vector head, okay? And so that shows that these are all getting much bigger because the vector heads obviously are getting bigger. So growth is happening away from this and the growth is increasing. If we look here, where x is equal to two, right? And we go along the line. We see that here there's no growth in z. Here's a tiny little growth in z, a bigger growth in z, and an even bigger growth in z. What does that mean? That means if we make a little graph of that with respect to x and z, f being z, we see that at x equal two, there's no growth of z, and then at x equal to three, there's a tiny bit of growth of three, x of z, and then the, there's more growth to four, and then there's even steeper growth as x gets bigger and bigger. So the rate of growth is increasing. And this is happening all around this point. So we don't know if this is a quadratic growth or a third degree growth or an exponential growth at this point. All we know is that the rate of change, the rate of growth is increasing. And this happens all the way around and it looks kind of steady-ish. So what we're getting is a bowl with this being the bottom point. Okay, let's look at the same gradient field but depicted differently. This was the one we had where the arrow size is related to the magnitude of the vector. And here is one where the arrow size is constant. You can see again that here's the zero point with this zero point, but this is more dramatic if there's a bigger change in growth. This is harder to follow in that situation. We'll see at a situation where the opposite is true. Here's the function that we use to generate the gradient field, x squared minus 4x plus y squared plus 2y. 
So it's an off-center paraboloid. It's off by plus two and minus one, which is where we get this minimum down here. That's at x equal to two, y equal to minus one. It corresponds to this point here. We can see that we've got more time for growth because we're off-center in that direction. Here's the growth. Look at this 80 here, right? So this is really growing up here. And then this is the part that we drew right in here. And it's a slower growth, but we can't really tell since this goes from zero to 80 in a flash. Okay, so let's think about one more thing. The last part of this video, you certainly don't have to watch. It's an attempt to find out what is the vector scale on this vector field. Remember that we always scale down our vectors so that they don't overlap. So we might want to know what is the actual magnitude of each of these vectors. So let's pick a vector that we can kind of measure. We're going to we're going to look at this vector here because it's nice and flat and it looks like it takes up about one third of the distance. So what's this distance here? It's two. So if we call this a V, we can say that the magnitude of V is approximately one third of two. We will round off to 0 0.7. And so what is that vector at? It's at the point X equal to minus three, Y equal to minus one. So, so X, Y equals minus three minus one. So let's calculate the actual V. Actual V is equal to two times minus three minus four and then two times minus one plus two. So that's minus six minus four and then minus two plus two. So that's equal to minus 10, zero. So the actual magnitude of V is 10. So what is our scale? Zero, seven divided by 10 equal to 0 0.07. And in fact, that was the scale I used to draw these. There are the Mathematica commands for this.